this is Mato. In this video I will show you the game between the Gerald Abrahams and Edmund Spencer. This very beautiful chess game was played in Liverpool in 1930. Gerald Abrahams had white pieces and he started with d4. Spencer played d5, c4, queen's gambit, slab defense, knight to f3, knight to f6, knight to c3, and now g6, transposing to Grunfeld defense, bishop to f4, bishop to g7, e3, Spencer castled kingside, bishop to d3, it is black to move. What are the most popular moves for black in this position? The most popular moves are d takes on c4, knight from b to d7, bishop to g4, pinning the knight, knight to h5, attacking the bishop on f4. What would be your choice? In the game, Spencer played b6, knight to e5, bishop to b7, c takes on d5, c takes on d5. Now black light skilled bishop is attacking his own pawn on d5. White to move. How would you continue? Perhaps a castling comes to mind. Or maybe h3, and if knight to h5, bishop to h2. Gerald Abrahams played h4, intending h5, pawn takes pawn, and opening of the h file h6, h5, and black is ready with g5. White to move. What is the best square for the bishop? Is it g3 or h2 or there is some other move? If you wish, you can pause the video and you can try to find the best move for white dark square bishop. What did you find? Abrahams sacrificed the bishop. Is it a sound sacrifice? Well, he calculated deep and hard and decided to do it. Pawn takes bishop. h6. Black to move. Black considered bishop to h8. But instead, he played bishop takes pawn. Let's have a look what Black didn't like about bishop to h8. That h7 check, king to g7, queen to f3, intending queen to h3 and queen to h6 checkmate. If bishop to c8 preventing queen to h3, then bishop to f5 would be winning for white. Okay, so we have bishop takes pawn. Rook takes bishop. King to g7. Attacking the rook. White to move. What is the best square for the rook now? This is the most interesting position of the game. Please pause the video and find the best move for white. What did you find? Is this good? But then, black can play something like rook to h8 or maybe knight to c6 catching up with development. What else can white play? Maybe white can play even rook to h5. And if knight takes, queen takes. We do attack. But Perhaps black would not take, he would play a rook to h8. 
should be still good for white. But Abraham's Gerald played an amazing move. F4, sacrificing the rook. King takes rook. What else? If rook to h8, then pawn takes pawn. Rook takes rook. Pawn takes rook check. King to f8. Queen to f3. Winning for white. If king takes pawn, it's even worse. Because of knight takes on f7 check, forking the king and the queen. So we have king takes rook. Pawn takes pawn check. King takes pawn. King to g7 is not better because pawn takes knight. And after king takes queen to f3 check. King to e6. Queen to f5 check. King to d6. And there is checkmate in one. White to move and to checkmate black king. Knight to b5 checkmate. So. Spencer capture the pawn. Queen to f3. Black is a whole rook up. But have a good look at this position. Black king needs two miracles to survive. King to h6. Black King has put his naked shoes on and is trying to run away. Check. King to g7. Queen to g5 check. King to h8. White to move. White. Play the move and Black resigned. The move is... Castling Queen's side. The threat is Rook to h1. Possible continuation is knight to h7, rook to h1, f5, queen to g6, threatening queen takes knight checkmate, rook to f7, knight takes rook, checkmate. And let's go back to move number 10, when it all started with h4. Would you play this? And what about this position? Would you sacrifice the bishop for the attack? But this must be the most interesting position of the game. When white played an amazing move. F4. Sacrificing the rook for the attack. How many moves did you guess? If you didn't guess any of these moves, don't worry, practice makes near perfect. And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your king hunt and bye for now.